Howdy, Tommy from Tank Missions here. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to stop a protein skimmer from overflowing. This is super annoying. It happens to a lot of newer hobbyists. Uh, to do this, we're gonna to have to teach you a little bit about how a protein skimmer works, how to dial it in, and then also how to address issues where your aquarium water has too much surface tension. That can be caused by a variety of different factors. We'll go into a few of those in this video. A lot of people make protein skimmers out to be more complicated than they are, but they work by having a reaction chamber, which is this part of the skimmer here, fill with bubbles, the smaller the better generally, and then those bubbles are going to collect proteins and fats and things like that on the surface of them, and they're gonna push and pull those up to the top of the protein skimmer, and that increases the surface tension around those bubbles, which gives them structural rigidity, which prevents them from popping. And so, because they're stable bubbles, they're gonna rise up to the top into the collection cup and you're gonna remove those proteins and fats from the aquarium. So they're effectively removing waste along with a couple other things uh, from the aquarium by increasing surface tension around those bubbles. That's what a protein skimmer is doing. And you're gonna dial in your protein skimmer by affecting the water height inside of the reaction chamber. So your goal when you're dialing in a protein skimmer is to make the water in here as consistent as possible. There's a few things that are gonna affect the water level inside your protein skimmer, and the most important of those is the water outside of the protein skimmer. So you want your protein skimmer to be sitting in a compartment of your sump that has a very, very stable water level. You don't want that water level changing at all. The water level inside the protein skimmer when it's off is gonna be equal to the water level outside of the protein skimmer. That makes sense, right? And if you lower the water level outside the protein skimmer, you're gonna lower the water level inside the protein skimmer. Same thing if you raise it. So if you have your protein skimmer dialed where you want it and you're getting even just half inch fluctuations in the water level outside of the protein skimmer, your skimmate production is gonna be really inconsistent and it's gonna be much more likely to overflow. Now to dial in your protein skimmer, once it's sitting in that stable water level, you wanna adjust where the water is inside the skimmer by adjusting how much water is exiting the skimmer or where that water is exiting. So with these older style protein skimmers, water comes in and then water comes out through a standpipe. This is a really great demonstration tool because if the standpipe is down here, then the water level is gonna be right about there. And if the standpipe is higher, like how it was before, then the water level is gonna be higher in the protein skimmer. If you have a protein skimmer with a gate valve or some kind of dial, they almost always work righty tighty lefty loosey. So if you wanna raise the water level inside of the protein skimmer, you're gonna turn it righty tighty. And if you wanna lower the water level inside the protein skimmer, you're gonna turn it lefty loosey. Remember that and your protein skimmer will be much easier to manage. Ideally, we're shooting for the water level to be just below this lip where the neck starts. You want the water level to be just below there so that you have just bubbles coming up here. Your protein skimmer is designed to function at a specific water level, so you wanna make sure that you read the manufacturer's recommendations for that and try to keep it within that range. Typically, it'll be about a two inch range, you know, maybe five to seven or seven to nine, something like that. You wanna make sure that your protein skimmer is within that range and then you wanna keep it as stable as possible. All right, so you've checked everything that we've talked about already. Your skimmer should be working fine and instead it's overflowing with bubbles. The skimmer collection cup is filling within a matter of seconds or minutes. That means that the surface tension of your water is too high. There's a variety of factors that can affect this. With some of the more modern skimmers, they can be sent into a state like that just by feeding PE mices or some really fatty food. Uh, it can also be caused by uh, using a lot of epoxy putty or super glue. Even new aquariums, the, the sand and rock, those little cloudy particles that go into the water, they can cause a protein skimmer to overproduce sometimes. A lot of medications will cause a protein skimmer to overflow, uh, namely ChemiClean. It's a super popular medication that people use, ChemiClean and also Red Stain Remover. They will cause your protein skimmer to overflow and oftentimes the 25 or 50% water change that you do after one of those treatments isn't going to be enough to make your protein skimmer run the way that it was before the treatment. So now the really easy way to fix this is to get yourself a little piece of egg crate or something similar and you're going to take the collection cap off. You're going to put the piece of egg crate there and you're going to sit the collection cup right on top of that. And so what's going to happen 
and I'm going to show you this later in a demonstration of one of our coral troughs. But what's going to happen is most of the bubbles are going to come down the side of the skimmer, but some of the bubbles are going to continue up into the collection cup. And what you're going to end up having is like that perfect ideal skimmate in the collection cup. And so if you give it time, say a day or two, you'll notice that it starts to fill up with darker and darker liquid, and eventually it doesn't fill up with anything at all. And when you reach that point, when bubbles are no longer going up into the collection cup, you're gonna remove the egg crate, you're gonna put this back on, and chances are your skimmer is gonna be working just like it was before it had whatever issue caused it to overflow. All right, so here's our protein skimmer. You can see it's a little dirty probably give it a clean. I'm gonna add some ChemiClean and you're gonna see how the skimmer reacts. All right, so ChemiClean's going in. I'm gonna put that right by the intake of the protein skimmer. You see instantly it's affecting the surface tension of the water. It's pulling out all that medicine that I just put in there. It's about to start overflowing through the top. Oh no! All right, so now we're gonna fix it. Now with some models of protein skimmers, you can just kind of balance the lid, uh, but that can get a little tricky. You can also, with these Red Sea skimmers, you can put them in at an angle. And I wouldn't point it towards the uh, silencer because if this gets full of water, it's also gonna affect how it skims. Uh, but you see how just by putting it at an angle and allowing most of the bubbles to go away, we're getting normal skimming production up at the top there. And if we leave this like this over time, it's gonna pull out all this extra, uh, you know, skimmable material in the water. But the safer way to do this is with a stable platform, like a piece of egg crate. Just let the bubbles come out the top of that. You can put that pretty much anywhere on there where it's not gonna fall off. And then you'll see that it's starting to pull out some skimmate. And so just give this a day or two, you know, maybe longer, depending on what's going on with the tank. And it's gonna pull all that skimmable material out of the water and it's gonna make it run just like normal. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please consider hitting that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button and also the bell. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.